In this episode of Lift Art Builds, we're gonna show you how to take a blank panel that you may have cut in the past and just cut the word out of the middle of it. We'll go from this to this. Oh, can you see it? There it is. Stay tuned and find out how to do it. A few years ago, I designed and built a sign for the Vineyard Station building. It's a multi-use building in Vinton, Virginia, and it's got now several restaurants in it. At the time, it only had one restaurant in it. Now it's got a few, and um, it's a what's called a monument sign. Uh, it stands on its own on a concrete pad, and there's four aluminum panels down each side that will display the names of the businesses that are in the building. So at the time, there was only one place in it, R&D Coffee, and now there's three more tenants in this building. So, so these are 42 by 10 uh, aluminum panels, and these are the blanks. These are the ones that you know we made in order to accommodate businesses in the future. So what needs to be done is, you know, this is the finished product. So I don't need to cut the sign and its contents. I just need to cut the new business name out of the center. So how do you do that uh, and get it centered? So it's a 42 inch wide by 10.1 inch tall rectangle. All right, so what I did was I had this drawn out in Photoshop. And so luckily I saved that so I know what font I used those years ago. Redid it with the new business names, exported those three times, brought those into route as images. I'll do it again just to show you. But when you import that, it's just a picture. This is just a JPEG. And then you can use the vectorize feature in Inroute, which traces it. And now you have an actual these are lines now, so you can cut these. And if you use Inroute, real quickly what you do is you, you explode it, and then you merge it. Don't ask me why you have to do that. And now we can scale it, right? So we can delete this now, and I'm actually doing that here. So I have a plate. So the red rectangle is the plate that you define. That is normally the plate that you will be cutting the design into or out of. And in this case, this is my plate. So when you go to define your plate, I am defining it as a 42 by 10 rectangle. And so that's my reference point. So when I bring my scaled drawing in, I index it on the bottom left corner like so. And then I scale it by holding shift and dragging till the lines meet up close enough. And now I delete, let's see, I need to do the whole Explode, transform, merge, and then delete this outer rectangle. So all we have is the text, right? And now what happens if I cut these out, the middle of the A, the P, the O, the D, and the E are gonna fall out because these are just independent little pieces. So we need to do what I call stencilifying it, where you take a rectangle and place it across each piece of the letter that would drop out. And then you take the trim tool and you trim, trim, trim. And you can see what I'm doing is adding little connective pieces like so. Inroute has the worst navigation methods of all time. You literally have to grab a scroll bar like it's Windows XP, but all right, bang, bang. So now you can see that now uh, when these are cut, in fact, I will Remerge these so you go transform merge now they're all merged and now you can see how these middle of those letters are going to be floating now and connected so you go to toolpath this and I've already got my dimensions in here I'm cutting it out of eighth inch aluminum with a 45 amp tip on the plasma cutter got everything set 60 degree entry angle uh, at an eighth inch long hit OK and it, one thing you need to be very careful of when you're doing just an internal design and not the outer plate and an internal design is normally this is set to external tool pathing. So what would happen, you can see the tool path will be on the outside of these letters. Because the way it works is it starts 
it goes to the outermost portion of your design, starts with external tool paths, and then any shapes that are inside those bigger shapes will be cut with an internal tool path. But we don't have any layers of shapes, and we already have our, our plate is cut. So we need to change this to an internal tool path. So there's that. And now, now I will go to machining, output, you choose selected because I have other things on this file. And then I have folder I select to. So now I'm outputting the files to the computer out there. And now we will go cut them. So the next challenge is to take this and put it on the machine, uh, but you need to put it on square and zero your machine on this bottom left corner every time so that your text ends up in the middle here. Now I have more eight inch aluminum, but I'd really like not to have to dip into that stock. And you can see this has been out in the weather a little bit. So once we cut it, we're gonna do, redo the linear brushing and then get it back to the customer. So I'll meet you out by the plasma cutter. Okay, so we've drawn the text that needs to be cut out here. And now I need to make sure that it gets cut out in the middle of this plate. So a little shorthand that we've been using in the shop, we have this uh, aluminum C channel and we've been using it to do a quick square off the side. So obviously we want our plate to be square here. So what we usually do is just slap that there and then what I'm gonna do is since these corners are rounded, um, I'm gonna take this square, framing square, and put that up against the C-channel. And then I will use that to index my plate, like so. And now, one trick you can use, have our wireless pendant here, sweet little accessory for the plasma cutter. Um, Watch your cell phones here. I'm gonna bring it to the bottom left corner, get it lined up there, and get it lined up this way. And now, to make sure that it's lined up this way, I'll just jog the machine down the length of the plate and make sure that it stays on the edge the whole time. It's actually off just a little bit, so I'll move it just a smidge. That's looking pretty good. So I know that the plate is lined up with the x-axis of the machine. Oops. And that's why you have collision detection. All right, so then I hit my set XY button right here. Yep, that's set to zero. And now my plasma cutter's on, my switch is on, and I go into the here and pick 45 amp, eight inch aluminum. Let's cut Aphrodite and then we'll hit go. And we'll just do this uh, six times. Now, if I'm careful and I don't move any of this stuff, I can just set the new plate in and not press anything. Looks like a centered sign. It's pretty centered, right? You're a graphic designer. Does that screw with your brain at all? Mm -mm. And that is how you put a word in a sign panel that you cut a while ago and how to program it and all that. So I gotta do this five more times for this particular customer, which again, we did actually do a full build video of this sign. So click here. Walker, please put these in for sure, because that was a cool video. Uh, that was one of our very early builds. So if you've rejoined the channel in the last year or so, you probably haven't seen that one. So these are for that, the Vineyard Station sign. Some friends of mine are the contractors in charge of that whole, whole facility. And so they were nice enough to bring these back to me and have me cut them. And it's good to see that there's businesses moving into this building that they renovated all those years ago. So yeah, small town, Zips, uh, synergy. <laughs> anyway, uh, thank you for watching. Short little tip and trick, ob obvious benefit of having a CNC plasma cutter in your shop. And very, very simple signage as far as concept goes, but take these lessons and apply them to bigger things and you'll get better and better and you'll be able to do more complex stuff. Also click here if you wanna see our most complex CNC plasma cut panel yet.
There's so many things for you to engage with. Check out our Patreon if you're into it. Check out our merch if you love us, because uh, we love you. Appreciate the support, like, and subscribe. We'll see you on the next one.